Hi. And, oh, I'm sorry, I'm starting over. Good morning, Mr. Salzberg. I'm Mrs. Ellis. Welcome to room 402 at SW Elementary. This is my class. Good morning, Good morning Mr. Salzberg. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> We were not sure if you would like us to start with some questions or if you had something you wanted to talk to the class about first. It's up to you. Okay, first request. Is there, are you able to move the camera down a hair? I'm seeing mostly, see, there you go. Hi, you guys. Hi. <laughs> um, so wait, what grade do we have here? We have a combo class of third and fourth grade. Third and fourth grade. And you guys are south of me, yeah? You're yeah. Is that Not south. I mean, yes, yeah, yeah. Well, south. Yeah, we're out towards Palm Springs. Right. Is it raining there today? Yeah, we got a little rain this morning. Same here. It's it's uh, we need it. So yeah. um, w I can start talking to you guys a little bit and then have them ask some questions. Sounds That'd be good. great. Okay. Sounds so good. you guys know that I'm an author, right? Yes. Yeah. You know I write stories. I'm also an illustrator. I do the artwork. Some authors write, just specifically write. Some illustrators just illustrate. Some of us do both. I do both. Um, I've been doing it since 1981. A long time. I could be your grandmother or father. Uh, I uh, have done about 50 books, 5-0. I see you have beautiful oops over there. I had the same book right here. I have it actually in English and in Japanese on this one. Oh, I can't wow. read Japanese. Um, and I, and I th and thought, uh, how many of you read that book or saw it? The Oops book. Okay, cool. So uh, let me just tell you a little bit about what my job is. My job is, I'm in this room, you can see a lot of guitars behind me, right? So this is my studio in Los Angeles. And every morning I get up and go to work in here. I don't have a boss. I don't have anybody say today write a story called Beautiful Oops. So my job is to have little invisible antenna on my head like a snail. And I'm always looking for ideas. And it used to drive my son crazy. He's big now, but he would come home from school and he'd go, I'm hungry, Dad. And I'd say, that's a great title for a book. And he said, no, I'm really hungry, Dad. And I'd say, that's a better title for a book. And then he'd say, if you keep saying that, I'm telling Mom. And I'd say, I don't like that title at all. So sometimes a title or an idea comes from just something someone says. Sometimes it's a feeling. Sometimes it's something you hear. Sometimes it's a combination of both. Oops came because I travel all around the world. I've spoken at schools and libraries and TV shows in China, India, Vietnam, Russia, all over, all over, and all over the United States. So in my talk, I show two of my, two of the pictures. One shows a painting I did, and a dog got locked in my studio, and the dog tried to climb out of the window, and it climbed up onto my desk, and it had paw prints all over my painting. And I cried when I saw it because the painting was ruined, and the dog had a really bad day. After staring at this painting that I had spent so much time working on, I realized I could cover every paw print with a cloud. I saved the drawing. <laughs> that picture is in my, my presentation. Also, I had a sketchbook. My mom bought me a sketchbook from the time I was little. She never would buy me a coloring book. She said, why would you color in other people's artwork? So I have all these sketchbooks, and I always draw on them, and I've got every single one since I'm about eight years old. This book, I spilled a cup of coffee on, and it had a stain. And most of us would say, I need a new one. There is my phone. I can't do that right now. Hold on. I'll call you later. So this one I spilled coffee on, and when the stain dried, I took a Sharpie, and I traced the stain. And this is what it looked like. I don't have a camera going here. Can you see that? Yes. Yes? Can you yes. see there's a, kind of a face there? I gave it a little eyeball and, a, and an arm. I called this a coffee blob monster. And the coffee also leaked around the back of the book because the book was lying down. And there was a stain on the back. And I made a trace of the shape and gave it an eyeball because to me, it looked like the profile of a gorilla. Okay, so teachers saw this picture 
and the picture of the book where I had painted the paw prints and said, can you teach how you fix your mistakes? Now, my wife, who I just hung up on, who's very smart, um, said, I like the word oops better than mistake. It's got a little less sting to it. And I like that idea and began to tear and fold and spill. And it was like a scavenger hunt. And speaking of which, I can show you something that I'm just finishing. This, when I make a book, I'm throwing a lot of information at you. I make something called a book dummy. And I just take my pictures and I tape them together and it looks like a book. The next book that's coming out next year, I have many books coming out, is called Celebrate Oops. And this is what it looked like when I sent it to my editor, who was like my teacher and reads my work and makes me go back and fix it all the time. And this is what I sent them. This was originally called Beautiful Oops, Let's Make It Workbook. But it is called now Celebrate Oops. And every page will have something like a tear, but it will be blank. And you, as the reader, can paint in your own picture. So each page will have a spill, um, a tear, some things I don't know what you would do with, like a bunch of little folded up pieces of paper. And I took a picture of a broken plate. There's all kinds of things. So I've been working on this. And not everything my editor liked. There's some X's here. They're saying, let's not include that. So I have to work on it. How many of you, when you write a story, want to write it as quickly as possible? How many of you yeah. want to get a great grade on it? Yes. How many of yes. you want to write it as fast as possible and never work on it more than once? Yeah. Me too. So, have you read my book, Crazy Hair Day? We watched no? it. We watched it online. Okay, so that story takes about three minutes to read. How many of you think it took me three minutes to write it? How many of you think it took me three hours? Yeah. How about three days? About three weeks. Yeah. I, worked on, I worked on that book for five years. Oh. I rewrote it probably 40 times. 40. Now, you can't do that. When your teacher gives you homework, you can't say, I'll give it to you when I'm in uh, middle school. It wouldn't work, would it? No. But I have to write and rewrite. My editor, who, again, is like your teacher, reads it and says, this works, this doesn't, try this, I don't understand that. And one of the things I've learned after doing this for so long is two things. It's really helpful to read your work out loud. And then, do you know what your ego is? An ego? When you like get your feelings hurt or you're proud, that emotion, the, the, the emotion that makes you feel hurt, you take it out of your body and you put it in an invisible box and you take that invisible box and you dig a hole in the backyard and you put that invisible box with your ego in it and you put it in the ground and then you put dirt on it. So that your ego has nothing to do with it. And then have someone read your story out to. And what happens is they'll say, oh, I like this. This doesn't make sense to me. I don't understand that. And our normal response would be, are you kidding? I know what I'm talking about. What is your problem? Right. You have to have the ability to listen and go, they're not saying this to mess me up. They're saying this because they want my story to be great. Mm -hmm. So things that make sense to us as the writer, when someone else reads it, they don't always get it. That's why I have to go back and work on something over and over and over. And I've published 50 books, and I'm still rewriting my things. I've never written a story once and had it be perfect. I've never written a song once and had it be perfect. I've never made a drawing once and had it be perfect. So my whole message here is you've got to keep practicing and practicing and practicing. Most of you tried to ride a two-wheeler and probably fell off. Most of you tried to stand up and walk after having crawled and fell down. If you didn't practice, you would be riding tricycles and crawling to school, okay? <laughs> So there is something about practicing that's really helpful. Now, I'm going to share my screen with you for a second. I'm working on a book right now. Have you seen Chendu? Oh, I don't know if I can share my screen. Huh. I haven't yeah. done this one. Is that a lot? <laughs> I don't think yeah. I can. But I can do this. Let me see. Oh, 
I have a new iPad and I can draw on it with a pencil. It's too big. Um, how many of you have ever been working on a drawing and had made a mistake? Yeah, good. Because if you said not you, I would be surprised. Uh, so if I do this and this and this, I'm hoping you're going to be able to see this. Right? There's nothing there, right? Now, what if you were, let me get a pick some black ink, black ink, hello, yes, and this, and um, this, let's see if this shows up. I can actually use my finger, but it be faster. If I do this, can you see that? Yes. Okay, so let's try it from the beginning. If I do this, let's say I'm going to draw a face, right? And so usually you make a circle, and then your friend goes, ah, <laughs> and scares you. And you go, that is not what I wanted to draw. Yeah. I need a new piece of paper. Well, guess what? You're killing trees. So instead of a new piece of paper, what if I flip this and look? Oh, my goodness. That's perfect. What is that? I have no idea. If I gave you each a copy of this on paper and said make a picture out of it, you could tell me that that is a noodle doing yoga. And that would doing... be fine. You could say it is a worm doing a dance. Whatever yeah. you want, I would never say your squiggle is wrong. It is impossible to make a squiggle mistake. And because it's not math, where you have to get an answer that your teacher wants, when it comes to art, any answer is perfect. So I could do, mm hmm Oh. <laughs> Look what he turned it into. Oh. Wow. That's cool. You guys like that? Whoa. Okay. So that's one possibility. I can now hit undo, 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 undo. And say here we have, this is a really fat pan. I'm going to make it a little skinnier. Here, hold on. Mm -hmm. Snail. A snail. Okay, could you write a story? Absolutely. Now, what about this? What if we do this? So those are just plain. Now you could write a story. What if this boy one morning put on a hat that it was dark when he went got ready for school? When he got to school, everybody was staring at his head. <laughs> he had no idea he had put a giant snail on his head. Could you write a story? Yeah. Would you want to write a story? Not necessarily. Could you write a story about a snail? So all that is is you don't have to go, I don't want to write a story about a boy with a snail on his head. That's fine. <laughs> Plain. And just saying snail might make you think of something that's slow, and that's the way your story goes. All this is 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 to get an idea going because I know you guys because I'm the same way, and I go to a lot of schools, and most people, when they are handed a blank piece of paper, this is what I hear a lot at school. Tell me what to draw. <laughs> tell me what to write. I don't know what I should be doing. Please tell What are you doing? Oh, I want to do that. It's just noodling around and getting an idea, and all of you can do that. All right. So that's enough of me talking. You guys have any questions? Thank you, Barney. Yes, I'm going to start with the first, and then I have a couple of people who would like to ask you as well. Thank you for sharing all those ideas with us. That was great. We did actually have an opportunity. Oh, hi. What's your dog's name? Ah! Okay, oh. go ahead. That's Lucy. Go on. Get out. Blech. Dog's lick. Go ahead. Um, yeah, we did do some beautiful oops of our own. Maybe we'll get to hold those up and share those oh. with you. And they wrote a story with them as well. So thank you nice. for that information. 
Um, the first question, that, um, I have this question, and then I'll have about three people ask as well. My first question that we all love to know the answer to is, if you could write a book with any author, who would that author be? Wow, no one's ever asked me that question. Awesome. <laughs> wow. Probably Kevin Hankus. You know who that is? No. <laughs> Kevin, yes, you do. He wrote uh, like Lily in the Purple Plastic Purse. No. Julius is the Baby of the World. No. He has a new book right now called Waiting, which, wow. He's won the Caldecott. He's won. He's wonderful. Will, oh, the Lily book, many of you know Lily? <laughs> Our librarian says yes. Yes, the other one isn't around anymore, but I would have loved to have met and worked with William Steig. And William Steig was a New Yorker cartoonist, and when he was 62, he wrote his first picture book. And when he was 87, he had done about 30 books. And about that time when he was in his late 80s, he wrote a book that was 32 pages that became a movie called Shrek. Ooh, so his picture books, his picture, he has a book, your librarian's there, um, The Amazing Bone, was a book that changed my life. I found that book as an adult and wanted to write children's book after I read that. Oh, awesome. So Great. William Stark would have been someone I would have loved to have worked with. Awesome, thank what you else? for that. Good question. And next person coming up to ask you a question, come on up, Abigail. Very nice. This is a class. Oh, thank you. Want to say hi? There's my son. He's saying hello. Hello. Hi. 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 Yes. <laughs> I would like to ask you a question. Okay. When was your first book published? My first book was published in 1981. And if you hold on one second, I can show it to you. Hold up. I think. Do I have it? I should have it. To get in the share of my wall, I don't have it. I think I just had it out the other day. Um, it was called It Must Have Been the Wind, and the wind must have blown it away. So, yeah, it was um, It's so funny. So, yeah, 1981. 1981. It must have been the wind. It was about a boy who was trying to fly his kite, and he was so anxious about flying it that he heard noises all night, thinking that it was the wind. And it was elephants running through his room and weird stuff happening. So, 1981. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay, another question, Maya? Hi. 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 Hi, my name is Zaya. I would like to ask you a question. Um, when you get stuck while writing, what do you do? When I get stuck writing, what do I do? Like with my hands like stuck to my pen with glue and I can't take it out of my, no, I'm not that kind of thing. Um, <laughs> this is what they call writer's block. A lot of people ask about this question. Um, because I draw, First of all, I make myself write every day. If I, some people go, well, I'm waiting to be inspired. I want to get this idea. And you kind of hope it happens. But if you don't, for myself, make yourself work, you could even sit down and go, I have no idea what I'm doing. I have nothing to say. I am bored. This is a terrible thing to be doing. I would rather be outside eating pizza. <laughs> and you're writing because you're writing. If you have block, you can't write. So I suggest you keep writing because eventually you might get one line that gives you a, an idea of where to go. But to go, I'm stuck. I have nothing to do. That doesn't work because you're not going to get unstuck unless you make yourself work. So I constantly push. And because I draw, sometimes I will draw pictures of the character that I'm stuck on. And the picture, just if I drew a picture of someone like this, they look like they maybe they're angry. That might suggest a way to go in my story that I didn't imagine. So drawing sometimes helps, but writing breaks the block. 
There. Good Thank question. You. You're welcome. Hey. Introduce yourself. Please. Hi. Hello, my name is Patrick. Hi, Patrick. Patrick. Let me guess. You have a question you want to ask me? <laughs> yes. I should be a fortune teller. Go ahead. Um, if you could choose from Diver Wimpy Kid or Harry Potter, which one would you choose? Wait, wait, wait. What was the first one? <clears throat> Diary of a Wimpy Kid. Oh, to do what with? To have written? <laughs> no. To, to read. Which one? To read? Yeah. I think I'd like to read Diary of a Wimpy Potter. <laughs> <laughs> or Harry, Harry Wimpy Kid. <laughs> that would be about like a little wimpy gorilla. Um, it's funny, my assistant, I have a woman who works for me a couple days a week. She went to Harry Potter to hug to the thing at Universal yesterday. Ooh. She was there at 7 in the morning, dressed up as Harry Potter. Um, you know, they're so different. That's like saying, would you rather eat ice cream or pizza? You know, <laughs> at some point you're going to get too sick of the sugar and you're going to want to eat something else. And sometimes you're going to get too sick of the cheese and you're going to want dessert. They're both great, and I love both of them. I have to admit, I did not start reading Harry Potter until two years ago. My son, who's big now, looked at, I was at a school, and I got the face that I'm getting from some of you, like, I can't believe you've never read it. And my son stacked every book in order and left them in my room. So I read them, and they're amazing. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, we have one more question. Okay, I have one more answer. <laughs> my name is Riley, and I want to ask you a question. I figured that part out. Not your name, but the question part. Go ahead. What was your favorite book that you wrote? What was my favorite book that I wrote? <laughs> As this, well, that's an interesting way to phrase it. Um, you know, I get asked this question a lot, and I don't have a favorite one. Um, I love a couple of them. A couple of them I wish I hadn't published, but um, I love Oops. I think it's really fun to see that it's had an impact on a lot of people. Um, Crazy Hair Day, I like the message of a lot about kind of supporting your friends. Um, so, I, yeah, I don't really have a favorite. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Maybe we can pan, can we somehow pan and show him? We're going to just hold yeah. up our beautiful oops. Great, great, great. You guys wanted to hold up your beautiful oops and show him some of the, um, I like this one, Alex. Bring, bring up yours. This one's really cute. And we made stories to go with him, but I really thought his was cute. He turned his little hole into a man with a donut. That's fantastic. Yeah. Oh, can you go, now, can you, you can take pictures of these and put, put them on the beautiful oops website. Yes, yes, your publicist asked me to do that. I will do that for sure. Great. Let's see what else. I really like um, Natalie. Was in your, yours that just um, randomly got torn like this, and she turned it into something that we all agree that it looks like Patrick. Um, is it Patrick from SpongeBob's? Um, oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Krabs' daughter from uh, SpongeBob SquarePants, apparently. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Yeah, so we're all really proud of our beautiful. Those are fantastic. Do you, do you know, can I oh, two it's, minutes? It, yeah, okay, put them down, guys. Go ahead. Those are amazing. Oh, it's hey, how many of you have ever done that? Uh -oh. Artwork from an oops. I'm sorry. Has anyone ever done that? It was cutting out. We didn't hear you. What did you say? Uh -oh. Made oops art. Here, what happened? <clears throat> Hello, oh, we can hear. Yeah, now we can hear you. It's kind of coming and going right now. Okay. I was asking, had I don't know why it's doing that. Uh oh, it's cutting Hello. out. Can't hear. Let's go over here. Can't hear me. Yeah. It's coming and going. We heard, can you hear me? <laughs> can you hear me now? All right. I just was asking if they had done that before. Oh, no. We, we got that from when we looked at your book, and I went around tearing pieces of paper, and then they did that on their own. Great. Great. 
All right. Well, I was going to try to read you something, but it sounds like it might not work. It's okay. working now. Okay. So this is a book that's coming out. Would you rather be a princess or a dragon? Ooh. This is coming out in the fall. And this is, would you rather be, if it doesn't work, just tell me. I'll, I'll stop. Would you rather be a princess or a dragon? You'll never know which one to be until you've tried. If you want to be a princess or a dragon, here's a book to help you decide. Because <laughs> if you want to be a princess, you should wear a lot of pink. <laughs> if you want to be a dragon, being green would help, I think. Oh, well, those are cute pictures. And if you look really closely, I used a paper to paint the dragon. If you want to be a princess, practice walking straight and tall. If you want to be a dragon, practice bouncing off the wall. <laughs> a princess loves her bubble baths. A dragon never bathes. <laughs> A princess is polite. A dragon misbehaves. When a princess eats her food, she takes a teeny tiny bite. A dragon, on the other hand, eats everything in sight. He's eating the table. <laughs> princess likes to practice the perfect princess wave. A dragon likes to search for the perfect dragon cave. A princess loves to smile in a dainty princess way. A dragon is just wild, being dragony all day. Some time, from time to time, a princess needs to take a little break. There is only so much pink that even princesses can take. Sometimes a little princess wants to be a little wild. <laughs> because inside every princess is a little dragon child and they're sticking their tongues out and inside every dragon I can say without a doubt there's a little princess uh -oh. <laughs> waiting <laughs> to come out oh. all right I've got to run because this phone's ringing again terrific talking to you all Good job. Thank you so much. Bye. 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 Have a great day.